And now we're ready for our first landlord transaction, receiving rent from tenants. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. When we receive rent payments, we usually receive them in advance of when the tenant stays for a particular period of time. Every transaction you ever record into QuickBooks always affects two separate areas of your records. First, every transaction that you record changes the general ledger in the chart of accounts. And the results of those transactions will show up on our good friend, the trial balance. But that very same rent payment, that very same transaction also changes tenant specific records and we check those on our good friend, the report we recently put up, the tenant balance detail. Now, what will happen on the trial balance when we receive our first rent payment as our first transaction? Well, we know that cash and bank will go up because we physically received money and put it right in the bank. And we also know that unearned rental income will go up because at the moment we receive the rent we have more unearned we always receive it before we earn it or at least almost so please note however our examples have slightly different events in slightly different order than would be in a real situation I promise you you will experience every situation in order soon However, please just follow along with our little story just for educational purposes. Learning it this way will make the ideas more clear. We will learn about security deposits and late paying clients later in the course. For now, let's just imagine that the rent we receive, or let's say the payments we receive in this video, is for future rent and not for a security deposit. So. Let's take a look at our first example. We charge Alan $2,000 a month for rent. So on January 1, he gave us $12,000 with a check, and that's for six months' rent in advance. His check was immediately deposited into the bank account, and we're always going to pretend that is the case every time we get a check from a tenant. That's just the way the course goes, and you could take a look at the banking and the undeposited fund features in the supplemental videos later. So what will happen in the trial balance when we record this? Well, it's blank now, but as soon as we record this payment from the tenant, cash and bank will show up for the first time as 12000 Unearned rental income will show up for the first time as 12000 And that's what will happen in the trial balance. But from that very same payment, the balance in Allen's specific records will become 12000 Now, this is a transaction that you must get from clicking the plus sign. Everything here relates to your tenants because it says customers. And the window will, that we will click to receive payment from tenants is receive payment. Go ahead and click it and the receive payment window opens. First, you have to click the pull down list to choose the tenant. And in this case, we want Alan Arby. Here he is. Be careful not to choose only the unit. Be careful to choose the specific tenant. Double click and there he is. Now, this is just warning you that an invoice is not going with it. QuickBooks doesn't understand that we're a landlord and in our specific business, the customer pays in advance of when we earn the money from giving the service. So this is a nice warning, but we'll just close it out by clicking this X over here. Now, the day that we're imagining we physically receive this money from Alan is January 1 of 2019. Remember, he gave us check number 6161. And 
We're also pretending that the money went directly into the bank account, and the amount he gave was $12,000. So this is all the information about that specific transaction on January 1 of 2019, and when we click Save and Close, we can look at the results uh, yeah, it's just, again, warning us, you know, we don't really want this to, so we'll click the Don't Bother Me box. We'll just save it as a credit, because we know that this will record that the tenant is owed $12,000 in future rent services for staying there in the future. So, click Save as a credit, and now we can click Reports, Custom Reports, trial balance all, the one we set up in an earlier video, and lo and behold, the numbers in the trial balance are exactly as we expected. We now have $12,000 in our bank account, and we now have a liability of unearned rent, $12,000, that we owe back to the tenant that we will slowly earn over time. More specifically, we can still click reports and check the tenant balance detail to see that specifically, specifically for Alan, you know it breaks it down by unit and so forth, but specifically for Alan, uh, it's owed 12000 Now don't worry about the bold down here, you can disregard that because that's totaling the, you know this is the total for Alan, but then of course that's totaling the unit which is in our case the same as the tenant because he's the first one as far as our records are concerned, and of course the total for the, the Meadow Lane and so on. But look specifically at the light for the customer and you can see that this says Allen specifically is owed 12000 in future rent services. Now doing a second example will illustrate some very important points. Let's imagine we charge Candy $1,000 per month in rent and on January 1, she gave us check number 7171 for $6,000, which is six months' rent in advance. We got two people whose parents really want them to stay away. So, her check was immediately deposited into the bank, and again, that's going to be the same situation for the whole course. So again, if you want to do it with undeposited funds and hold on to the check for a while before you deposit, you have to watch the supplemental videos about undeposited funds. So, what will happen in the trial balance? Well, before we deposit Candy's $6,000 check, these were the numbers after the most recent transaction. But after we record her check, cash and bank will increase to $18,000, and unearned rental income will also increase to $18,000. What else will happen? The balance in Candy's specific records will be $6,000 that we will owe Candy in future rent services until she finishes staying. So we again go back to the payment window. We click the plus sign and again click Receive Payment. And of course QuickBooks remembers the date, January 1, but this time we're choosing Candy Charles in apartment 3C. Okay, now again it's warning us that there's no invoice because it doesn't understand that we're a landlord and our customers pay us in advance. So let's just close this little X and payment and uh, make sure that we choose payment method check and it's check number 7171 that we immediately deposit into the bank account. That's what we're pretending in our little story. So she gave 6000 because she's also paying six months in advance, but her rent is only 1000 a month. So on January 1, she pays us 6000 in advance for six future months of staying. Save and close. And now, first of all, when we look at the tenant balance detail, you can see that just only Candy is owed 6000 for future rent services. Just only Allen is owed 12000 but the total of everyone together you can see here from Meadow Lane is 18000 and that's the total unearned by everybody. And that 18000 is the total unearned that's also the same when you click Reports, Trial Balance, you can see that unearned rental income increased to exactly the amount we predicted and cash and bank 
reflects exactly what we deposited. Now because this is your first transaction, I wish to give you something that's going to help you for the rest of the course and for the rest of your life as you use QuickBooks. You can fix any mistake by opening the transaction from the reports. Just double click, fix, and save. Let me show you. If you just click reports and you choose trial balance, you can see these are the accumulated totals of the accounts. And again, if you click reports, tenant balance detail, you get a different set of records, specifically each individual tenant. If I wanted to change Candy's payment from 6000 to 6 million, all I would have to do is double click and the window that I originally entered this payment into would reopen and I could change almost anything I want. I could change the date, the customer, the number or even the bank account that it went into. But let's just make this 6 billion, million, trillion, whatever you like. And we push tab. Okay, that's a lot of money. And we click save and close. Now, as soon as you save a changed transaction, the results in the report fix themselves immediately. That means if I click reports, trial balance, you can see I now have crazy numbers and that's because one of the two transactions is wrong. Now here is the best part. Even though the trial balance is a summary, any number on a summary report that is the sum of a, a whole bunch of other numbers, you can double click directly on that sum and another window opens up showing you all the numbers that led up to that. So again, let me just go back to where I was a moment ago. In the trial balance, if I want to know why is this the balance of unearned rental income, I can double click and I can see every transaction that led up to the balance of unearned rental income. Okay, but this doesn't seem to be the problem. It's this one, this payment right here. So again, I can double click directly on the line of the transaction and I will return to the window that I had originally recorded it in. I could change anything I want. Now, if I wish to save only the field, I can click away from the field and that saves only the field. And then when I click save and close, notice all the numbers on all the reports immediately fix themselves. The trial balance is back to normal, reports, tenant balance detail, also back to normal. So you never have to worry if you recorded a mistake.